All right, welcome back here for the first bonus question. Arbor Jacki, what does his future hold? Will he stay with the Montreal Canadiens organization moving forward? Well, it's going to be hard for him to send him down the way he's played his first four games. He's looked, he's played really well. He's been physical. He looked like he belongs. He surprised me how well he's played. But I think the numbers game will catch up when Joel Edmondson and Mike Matheson come back from injuries and he could be uh, the odd man out uh, going back down to Laval. But that won't be a bad thing. I mean, he can go back down to Laval. He'll play monster minutes down there and, and continue to improve. But he's shown me and he's shown, I think, the Canadian's management that he's ready to play in the NHL. If they need him, he can play. I mean, you know, this kid was never drafted in the OHL draft, never drafted in the NHL draft, uh, you know, got invited as a, an invite to a Canadian's training camp and, and impressed, obviously, got a contract, and he's just looked really good. He brings a, a physical dimension, I think, that they need, uh, not fun to play against. Um, he can play in the NHL, but as I said, I think the numbers game might catch up to him at some point this season. Yeah, the numbers game will probably catch up at one point. I don't think he's going to spend too much time in the American Hockey League, though, because Injuries are always going to be around, right? We don't know what's going to happen with uh, Edmondson this season, whether he'll play, you know, half the season or if he'll even play at all. It seems like there's so much nebulous energy going around with, with Edmondson's injuries. So I, I think Jack has a lot of opportunity to play in Montreal this year. The other thing is, if I look at this defense core and how they've played so far, I know it's only four games. He's not the guy who I would take out. Uh, I, I think I would take out Chris Weidman before, especially if Jordan Harrison and Caden Gooley end up taking some of that power play ice time. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for a guy like Jack I to continue to play and punish opponents. And as he gets more and more confidence to move the puck, like he just keeps getting better. I, I think he had his roughest game of the season, probably in Pittsburgh, but on a relative scale because everyone else was so good. I, I've been really impressed with him. He's been way better than I ever thought he would be after what I heard about his game coming into this year. He's incredibly impressive. As you guys touched on, you know, he's obviously given an opportunity through injury, but the, the kid has grabbed a, a hold of the opportunity to, uh, to to play very, very well and handle himself very well at six foot four, 238, leading the team with hits. This guy is not a fun guy to play against. So he seems to understand uh, how to play. He's got good mobility. He's got... Uh, he he's he's not a, a a bad player from an intelligence standpoint when he does have the puck because he does make pretty good decisions with the puck and again here's a young guy that's just trying to figure out what the NHL is all about and he's he stepped in there and shown poise and hasn't been you know there's been nothing negative uh, so to speak on his overall play so um, you know that's a good thing to have those type of guys in your organizations because obviously uh, as we know injuries come into the uh into the picture and uh, have some guys that can step in there and do the job immediately uh is a huge bonus but he's uh he's done really well uh i i spoke uh during the the preseason with rob ramage and he uh he had nothing but great things to say about him saying that you know this guy we just kind of fell upon and uh fell in love with with time and a great character a great kid and never a problem with a guy like that in your dressing room and uh, never a problem with uh, a kid like that that wants to learn and get better and that's what he's going to do yeah just watch him in the locker rooms after practice you tell the guys in the team really like him he's a likable type of character i mean the numbers game might catch up to him the contract situation too i mean he's an easy guy to send down to laval right there's no waivers involved or anything like that um you know andrew you mentioned uh Weidman before one of the reasons the Canadians I mean they're only carrying six defensemen to start the season they don't have an extra defenseman one of the reasons they signed Weidman is that they can make him the seventh defenseman and sit him out and he won't complain he won't like he's and he understands his role here with the Canadians is you know be a point guy in the power play and be a guy in the room everybody in the room likes Weidman he won't complain if he sat out to let the kids play he totally understands what his role is with this team and part of his role is helping these young guys develop if that means him sitting in the press box as the seventh defenseman as a healthy scratch, it won't be a problem. And that's something we could see, uh, as you mentioned, Andrew, we could see Jack Eye playing some games and Weidman sitting out. Um, so, you know, once Matheson, Matheson, who knows who's going to come back first, Matheson or Edmondson, they're both sort of long-term deals. But it is interesting that they've only carried six defensemen up until this point. That just shows you, again, how much confidence that they have in Jack Eye that he can play. Yeah, great character guy, Chris Weidman, right? Whether it's yeah. you need him to fill in on the power play or be a healthy scratch or fight somebody who's yeah. six inches taller than him, he'll do it all. 
Well, he won't need a fight now with it. They got Jack guy. I mean, yeah. that <laughs> this season, <laughs> this season, yeah, I mean, no Chris Wiseman fights. They were targeting Gallagher and uh, and Crawford <laughs> the whole game, and finally it was Chris Wiseman, all five foot ten and one hundred and eighty pounds of them dropping the gloves and coming to their defense. So we won't have to worry about doing that anymore this season uh, with Jack Iron. But that just shows you Chris Weidman that he it's hard not to like Chris Weidman when you get to know him a bit and you talk to him a bit. His teammates love him and he's a really good character guy for this team to have right now moving forward with all these young defensemen. Rick, final thoughts? No, I'm just saying that, you know, fighting's not a big part of the game, uh, obviously, anymore, but there is an occasion where some teams try and take advantage of the so-called uh better players uh to have a jack eye in your lineup uh is going to keep them honest and uh, know very well that he does even at this early stage has an intimidation uh factor in uh, his presence and the, the way he plays and that's that's a good thing to have on your side and uh i it's going to be an interest to see how they handle him uh you know when eventually some of the uh, the injury guys, uh, injured guys, could start coming back. But uh, a bonus to have a kid like that in your lineup. Well, he's got the coolest nickname. Uh, Stu <laughs> made the point before off air. Wi-Fi. That is the coolest nickname that I've heard, whether it's the NHL or any other pro sports around the world. Wi-Fi. Arbor Jacques might have that to his title as being the Wi-Fi of this franchise moving forward. That will do for the bonus round of Hockey Inside Out like and subscribe to our youtube page also don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter on montrealgazette.com slash newsletter for full episodes and bonus episodes go on to the hockey inside out news page and also submit your questions that we can discuss for future episodes we'll see you soon bye for now